I'm Ari. And I'm Angela. And this is Girls Gone Bible. We're a faith-based podcast where we talk about Jesus, God, life, mental health, everything under the sun. And we're so happy to have you guys with us. If you're new to the show, welcome. We love you so much. If you are a day one ride or die, God, we love you guys so, so much. And we have, before we start today's episode, we have some really exciting news. My best friend in the world and I have been so incredibly blessed with the opportunity. You guys, we're doing it. It's time. It's the Girls Gone Bible live show tour. I can't even tell you guys how excited I am to actually meet you guys in person and just hug you and probably cry with you. I just, this is going to be the most incredible experience and I just can't wait to meet you guys face to face. The first night of tour is going to be in Atlanta, Georgia on May 15th at the Center Stage Theater. Just like Ari said, you guys, we're going to hug you. We're going to love you. We're going to laugh with you. We're going to cry with you. And at at the end of the day, we're all going to experience Jesus together. That's the whole point of this tour. We want to do what we do here with you guys in person. We're going to do Q&As. We're going to probably, I imagine the set is going to have like us sitting way back. I have a feeling we're going to be in the audience with them. Watch. We're not sitting in our seat. <laughs> you know, I'll be right on you guys' lap. I was about to say, I was about to say, I'll probably be on some. We won't be on your lap. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> we love you guys. We just so, love you guys so much. We're so excited to to be with you and and just from the bottom of our hearts thank you for giving Ari and I the opportunity to do this thank you for trusting us to be a part of your relationship with Jesus yeah i i had a moment when we went live today about how we're going to be on tour and i was just like i can't believe we have this opportunity like i can't believe you guys put your trust in us and you guys just are so accepting and just love us and it just i really I know I say this a lot, but I really hope you understand from the bottom of our hearts what it means to Angela and I. Not only feel so incredibly loved by you guys to the point where it gives us a different confidence moving through life. Like we're different because we know that we have like a family of people that we get, we're like best friends. Like we really feel like you guys are our best friends. And at the same time, Having you guys in our life has held us to a standard that who knows if we would have ever reached without you guys. We're accountable in our relationship with Jesus because we want to do right, not only by him, first by him, but then by you guys. And we're going to do everything in our power to do whatever we can for you guys. Yeah, we just, yeah, we love you guys. And it's not easy for us to get up on here and be vulnerable and you know, we're new to this too. So again, just thank you for accepting us and trusting us and loving on us. You guys heal us and help (laughs) us every day in more ways than, you know, you imagine. So seeing all the responses to us going live today, it just (laughs) got, it just made it so real that like, we're all in the, it's a family. And yeah. like, you know, when you hear, you know, people who have platforms or, or whatever, and they say they have this connection with their, their followers or their people, and you don't understand until you experience it yourself, because how can you love someone you don't know? We love you guys. I don't care if we've never met you. We love you so much, and we can't wait to be with you guys May 15th in Atlanta, Georgia's first night, and then we'll have the rest of the tour dates announced after that. We love you guys so much. We love you guys. We hope you enjoy today's episode. May we glorify you in everything we do, Jesus. We love you. This is all for you. Let us get out of your way and move in this space, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That was wild. Beautiful. I've never started a podcast with a prayer yeah. like that. No, no, oh, it changes goosebumps. everything. Aww. Bro, even me as a Christian, I'm just like, all right, that's kind of set the mood. <laughs> <laughs> you guys' prayers always give me such, like, last time we were together and we prayed, like, you guys, like, when you were holding it, you gave me, like, goosebumps, like, from one side, like, to the other. It was really weird. And, like, hey, you got to use your microphone. I didn't even know we started. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. You know, I, I like your pastor breathing. You're just like, hey, Jesus. <laughs> and then if you need to. <laughs> like, I was like, whoa, dude. People comment all the time when Angela starts, like, preaching. She sounds like she's running up a flight of stairs because I just get so, like, breathy. It's but it's just. It's Yo, when me and, yeah. me and Reed were going through our edits with you guys, you guys were, like, so passionate. Go, mm, like that. It was so. Dog, we 
looked at like each other like, should we, like, should we mute them? Should we not like? Not but then, okay. but then we were like, I don't know. We don't want to be disrespectful to you guys. So you like, we should have muted us. Hey, dog. The comment section had me dying. We, we were so <laughs> embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, we should Wait, see actually do that on your show. Like, no, we don't. Do no, we don't do that on our show anymore. After that episode, we went on every comment. She did it on the Ramaswamy. Like we have like a president candidate sitting there talking about things. She's just. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Yes, I turned to you. I went like this. Like, I know, oh, because I was going, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. like, I'm listening. Hey, hey, dude, I know. But now, I think you, now. What did you think we were just talking about? <laughs> okay, but you made me sound going, mm-hmm. I was just going, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. I know, we literally started like moaning. Yes, yeah, bad, I know. Because you want people to know you're listening. I know, and we do it in unison, too, so it just sounds like mm-hmm. we're, I know. Uh, what I told you, you're high C, I'm low C. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You saw harmonizing. Yeah, literally, it's a problem. <laughs> Anyways. Hi, this guys. video is sponsored by Celsius. No, it's not. Oh, okay, it's not. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay, okay. No, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Would you hook us up with the Celsius? <laughs> hey, you Dude, you want this in. show to be sponsored? <laughs> you gotta, you yeah. gotta make your dues, bro. Get really? us the plug. Yeah, all I right, got well, you guys. We already introduced ourselves in the beginning of yeah. this. So you guys, GGB gang, we have literally the biggest treat for you guys today. We know you guys have been waiting for this because you sent us thousands of messages asking <laughs> for George and his beautiful fiance Shauna on. We have George Janko and hi. Shauna Della Rica. Oh, hi. He's hi. Like, Long time listener, first time caller. Very excited to be here. <laughs> We're so excited we to have you guys. guys. Thank you guys so truly much. truly feel like family already. I just, we love you we guys. Got, we got really close Quick. Yeah, like, really quick. Yeah. We, yeah, we were like hung out one time, and I, I was telling her, I was like to both you guys, I'm like, as soon as we met, I came down the stairs. We just couldn't stop talking. We like nonstop, nonstop, and then once we were apart from each other, we'd call each other, be like, we miss you, I, I miss you. We gotta hang out. Like it's so weird. I know we were really talking as if we've been friends forever, and <laughs> yeah. we're like, I miss you. When can we see each other again? We've never actually been hung out. Like it's the most beautiful yeah. thing. But I swear that's what happens when God's people come together, because the Jesus in me knows the Jesus in you guys and so that's why we feel like family without even knowing each other yeah that happens a lot it's yeah. cool yeah, I like that feeling it's beautiful yeah. so we like to start off we like to give people a platform to share your testimonies because we know that testimonies are so powerful so would you guys give us a backstory on how you found Jesus when you started your relationship with him whoever wants to go first you, you want you. me to go first yeah, you yeah, go first, first. Well, go, go ahead first. Shana <laughs> oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know, I guess, how do I put this? You know what's funny, I think, is like my testimony that I would have given even six months ago is so different than what I would say now, mm. you know? And I think it all started for me specifically. I mean, obviously, I was, you know, I was baptized. Um, and What was your denomination? We were a Presbyterian. Okay. Because my dad... What is that? Presbyterian. It's like a domination of the Catholic Church, yeah. right? Okay. So okay. similar. Yeah, my family's like French-Italian, so, you know, my dad's Italian. So I was you know, baptized in France, things like that. And, but it wasn't really something, and my mom, you know, is someone who always followed God, but I think for a time in her life when things got difficult, you know, she kind of separated from Mm. that for a little bit, you know. And now she's in a place where she's found him, she's stronger than ever, which is beautiful. Mm. But, you know, so I didn't have it much in my childhood. And then when I moved to California in 2014, I actually had a gift of a friend, her name is Michelle. And she's somebody who, you know, she had to go to youth group on Wednesdays and that was something really important in her family. And her family was just so beautiful and bright. There was something in her that was like, wow, like clearly something that you're doing with God is, mm-hmm. is working. And she'd take me to youth group and it was always such a fun time and the worship music was so beautiful and it was like, it just felt right, you know? Mm-hmm. So that really like started things for me when I was 17. And then from there, you know, I was kind of just, I was a Christian. You know. Oh, we know about that. But I was just, uh, you know, what I, mean? I was just a Christian. I knew God, and and but George, I knew, what's up? yeah, what's up, George? We know that. Like, <laughs> we know being a Christian, but not necessarily following the word in the way that he wants us no, to. No, no, I know, I know. Oh, I just, okay, I, I was, it was like, so funny, like the way you guys are like, no, no, we got you, girl. <laughs> you know That's exactly what this what podcast about. is built but, on. No, because it's such a big thing. Like yeah. usually, you know, you're a Christian, you say, but you don't do the things in your life that actually bring you close to God, to yeah, Jesus. You know, yeah. so. Hey, I know um, that's it's funny to say this, but like, we all say that about our past selves, but in our future selves, we're gonna say that about the time that we are right now. I, I can't know. believe it. Yeah, yeah that's we true. all we're I like, know. I was a Christian, but it's like I was like not that much of a Christian. It's like you just keep <laughs> How growing. How much more, more Christian can be? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I really don't know. <laughs> just Sorry, your turtlenecks go all the way no, up to no, here. No. Just no. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I haven't shown my neck in years. Yeah, yeah, it's like a pez head, bro. I know, like, yeah, dude, dispense a candy for me real quick. That'd I, be great. But yeah, you know, so. Um, but I think it was, I always knew it was like the right way and things like that. And then I 
met Georgie and obviously through his, you know, the way that he's led his life and the way that he's like shown me an example of what it is to actually lean on God for like the issues that you have in front of you and the blessings you have in front of you. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, you know, obviously an example in your life always helps. And, but he was never like, he was never pushed me on it. He was never like, you're not studying, you're not doing everything that you can. Like, what is your relationship? Like, he just let me be. Wow. And so I, it was just, it came from a place of me wanting to find out more and do that, you know? And so then I think it was about, was it six months ago? Yeah, so like six <laughs> months ago. Um, I, for the last two years, I felt like I'd really, you know, done everything I could to to do what I thought was right by God through every obstacle that was in front of me. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to have all my faith in you and I'm going to follow what you want me to do. But I still had that disconnect. I still had that missing, you know, that missing feeling. Mm -hmm. That thing that I feel like he has and other people had that special twinkle and fire inside of them and I just didn't quite have it yet. And he had a friend who came over with his girlfriend, really special, beautiful people. And um, we just... You know, I'm not going to get into the full details, but they had a beautiful prayer over us. And that night led to later on, like a conversation that we got into something where, you know, I just felt like I didn't forgive somebody in my life. And I felt like that wasn't like God would be disappointed in me wow. if I didn't forgive that person. Mm -hmm. And so we talked it through and then I came to an understanding and I came to, OK, so I need to pray about this and I need to pray about forgiving this person. I also need to pray for this person to be, you know, closer to God and things like that. Right. So, um, then I just, I went upstairs and I prayed with all my heart and it was the most, like, it was the most connected prayer that I had ever felt, you know, where wow. I felt like I was really in the moment. I wasn't distracted. I was really fully in and I felt like I was really having a conversation with him. And then after that, I just stood up and I had been crying a lot. So I had makeup all over my face. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I need to go wash my face. And then towards the end of me washing my face, it, there was just something in my head that told me to rinse my face three times in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh. And I didn't even know it was just something that was in my head. And so I finished that prayer by doing that those three times. And I looked at myself and I felt clean and new and like wow. just connected. And I went downstairs and I felt such a peace and such a stillness. And then Georgie and I were on the balcony and we were talking about, we were just talking. And it was there in that moment where I was literally like, wait, <gasps> I was like, wow. Sorry, let me get No, this is so beautiful. And I was like, wow. I like finally, like truly with all my heart, like understand why Jesus died for us. <laughs> That's like, you know the story you hear it so many times, but it doesn't fully like make sense to you. And we we're actually just talking about this story on our podcast with Cliff like a few days ago. But I just was like, wow, I fully understand the sacrifice and the reason why he did that for us and how big that is that he did that like <laughs> for me, you know? And in that moment, I just like couldn't even believe like the connection and understanding that I had. And and then I told him, and I hadn't even told him what happened upstairs. And I told him what happened upstairs. And he was like, dude, it was just the most wildest moment. And I just, yeah, I don't know. I just fell on my knees and I thanked God with all my heart. And ever since then, it felt like literally a, like a fire running yeah. inside of me. Yeah. Isn't it crazy how it just takes one person, that one person that started praying over you, led you upstairs to find him in that moment on your hands and knees. All it takes is one person. Like God just sends you people as angels in human form. Isn't that insane? It's yeah. so incredible. It's just, it's beautiful. They sent you as a witness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that that was something too I struggled with beforehand was that, you know, you, you hear people's stories and you're like, oh, okay, that's how it's supposed to happen for yeah. me. Yeah. But it's not. Like you don't know how it's going to happen you don't know when it's going to happen or what the experience is going to be course. for you so yeah it's so different for everybody what happened with you is that you had the baptism of the holy spirit yeah. in that moment the holy spirit came upon you what you experienced in that moment was a touch from jesus himself and then when you're on the balcony and you realize by the way thank you so much for sharing <laughs> that, was, that the way you did i know the spirit is moving because we feel it all over our body he's yeah. moving in the room and he was with you in that story that you were just telling and in the moment that you finally realized what Jesus did for you, it says in scripture that you can only realize Jesus is Lord by the Holy Spirit. So all of that, what happened in you is the Holy Spirit came upon you and in you. And that's why you had that fire. That's what he does is he gives you that fire. 
and he's calling you to something so incredible, Shauna. You are a gifted communicator. You you remind me so much of Ari in the sense that you guys are so sweet and you're meek and you're kind and your heart. You guys don't just wear your heart in your sleeve. You wear it outside of your body. You're like, <laughs> hi, here's my heart when you meet somebody. God is going to use that and you're going to bring so many people to him. And when you were 17, you had no idea that this was going to be your life. You have no idea where you're going. Yeah. This is incredible. You're meek, but I see a boldness in you, especially I've been watching some of your, some of your interviews and you are bold yeah. and confident and I see it and I'm just so proud of you, Shauna. I really am. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, seriously, it's beautiful. Thank you so much for all your kind words. I really, of course. really appreciate it. Seriously. We and then adore you. We want to get into George's and then we want to get into how you guys met and because we have so many things to say to you guys <laughs> for what you're doing in culture. Yeah. Well, let's just go with George first and then we'll get into that. You guys, I'm so excited about today's sponsor. It's Olive in June. I can't tell you how happy I am to have somebody like Olive in June in my life so that I don't have to go to the salon anymore and I can get salon quality manicures at home. Olive and June Manicure System has everything you need for a salon quality manicure in one box. They have salon grade tools designed just for DIY nails. You can customize it with your choice of six polishes. This polish doesn't chip and it lasts for seven days or more. It breaks down to basically just $2 a manicure. And guys, what I love most about Olive and June's manicure system is their cuticle care. My nails look so much better with Olive and June than when I went to the salon, and not to mention so much cheaper, and I don't have to leave my house to get my nails done. I naturally have pretty dry cuticles, so their cuticle care truly saves my life. And my favorites are the press-ons. They look so real, they last so long, and they have so many sizes, and the best part is it's easy removal. You can legitimately just remove them with hot water. Olive and June quick dry dries in about one minute. It lasts for more than five days. It's full coverage in just one to two coats and it's offered in 40 or more cruelty free and vegan polishes. You guys are going to want to visit oliveandjune.com slash ggb for 20% off your first system. That's o-l-i-v-e-a-n-d-j-u-n-e dot com slash ggb for 20% off your first system. Thank you Olive and June for sponsoring this video. Okay, I'm gonna start, but if I don't cry at the end, like I'm <laughs> walking out. Uh, Jesus, please make sure. <laughs> so it was 13th of March. <laughs> just immediately. Uh, no, nah, I was a kid, and and uh, you know it's so funny. I went through a pretty ridiculous uh, childhood when it came to like making friends. Like a ri like, I know people had like hard times, but like mine was like really hard. Like they moved me out of school because I get bullied so hard, and uh, I used to. I actually just talked to my mom about this. And ironically enough, I was sobbing when I said this because I used to ask God, I go, God, like, the only thing that breaks me my, my heart when I was younger is I would watch my mom cry hmm. all the time. And I knew I was a good kid. Hmm. I was just, I always liked to talk. And I was like, I, I knew what I loved at a very young age. Uh, but there was a church next to my house. And I didn't have friends at the time. It was like around anywhere from like third grade to like sixth grade. It was like really, really hard for me to make friends. Um, I used to ride my bike to the church. It was like a block, not even a block, like in the neighborhood. That's the only reason my mom would let me do it. Uh, and I had a walkie-talkie. <laughs> so that's how close it was. Awesome. And, but I would sit in the grass and I would talk to God like wow. all the time. And I just knew I was going to do something for him. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I was going to do something for him. And I would always tell my mom. I'd actually scare her. I said, I'm going to get killed for this. Like at a young age. And she was like, why are you saying that? <laughs> don't say that. And I said, no, I, I don't know why. But I was watching a lot of Dragon Ball Z. So in my mind, I was like, I have to die for this. Like, but And then I realized he died for it. It was just a lot of, wow. there was a lot of things I had to figure out that um, it took me throughout life to figure out. And I would have dreams uh, when I was a kid. And later on in life, my dreams would um, be revealed through a scripture. So like mm -hmm. how God was described or talked about was exactly how he presented himself in my dream. So like it wasn't like, oh, I heard this story and then I had a dream. It's like I had a dream. And then a couple years later, while I was in Bible study, I would learn about how wow. like uh, Moses, you wouldn't be able to look at him directly because he's so bright. Well, one of my dreams when I was talking to him, I had to put my nose to the ground. So I wasn't allowed to look at him, but I was a baby. So I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And then when I realized that was the presence of God and I just really couldn't stare at him. Uh, 
so my turbulence as a kid was like, yeah, it was tough in school, but like I knew that there was something going on that I was just like, I'm okay. Let's go. And also like I had a great home and that's why I try to teach kids like, uh, or parents now, like it all starts from your house. Like mm -hmm. my, my school and my friends and everything else is really tough, but because my mom and my dad and my sister rocked that it just coasted. Wow. And so my mom would always teach me like, Hey, like these kids are upset with you or hurt with you because she never was short with me. She taught me, she talked to me like an adult. So, like, if some kid was making fun of me because I couldn't read, she goes, well, maybe he was made fun of at his own house and he's heartbroken. So I would learn empathy at, like, a higher level. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I was, able, I was in an ADD class, so I would learn that, like, the disabled kids were the sweetest kids. Mm -hmm. And then the, the kids that were, like, over here and lost and confused, they were, like, hurt and they would say crazy things. But then the kid that was drooling next to him on a wheelchair when he did talk to me, his heart was just unbelievable. <laughs> so I'm in fourth grade, and I'm realizing, I'm like, all the people that are in last place in school are like first, and the people that are first are not really where I wanna be. Mm -hmm. And then a year later, I run whoever's first is last and last is first. So I'm, it's like he was walking with me and kind of guiding me and whispering. And then I came to Hollywood as an adult, and I was like, yo, I'm out. And so like I went to a party, I did all these things, but in, in, in like, not the craziest way. Like for example, like my having fun was like me at a, at a club for like 10 minutes. Yeah, and then yeah. I'll be out. Like I also like, I didn't put God first. Uh, and then uh, the world came really hard on me. Mm. And so I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like I'm gonna bring it back. But so like now I brought it back, but as an adult and now I'm like really thirsty. It's kind of like, this is the best way I could picture it. The way my mom raised me is like, hey, if you're thirsty, here's a cup of water with ice and you're always quenched. And I was like, oh yeah, cool. And I'm just drinking, drinking, drinking. When I walked away from God, I became so thirsty without mm -hmm. even knowing what was going on. And so when I came back and took my sip, my body and my flesh was just like on fire that I was like, oh, like, I don't ever want to separate myself. So I kept him there and I would, I would just like, I would talk very deep because I'm very, okay. So the one thing that I did, I did love about myself since I was a kid and now is I never was afraid to talk about things I loved. Mm -hmm. If I really loved it, I, I wouldn't be ashamed about it because of how I talk to God in private is how I talk to people in personal like, or public. It, it doesn't matter to me. If like, if my God, who's the creator of everything is watching me, I don't care what Timothy thinks of me. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, it just yeah. doesn't make sense. I For never sure. thought that logic out. Right. So I started talking about it passionately behind uh, closed doors and it snuck its way into like podcasts because I think podcasts kind of show you who you are. Mm. And uh, through that, I, it, it was weird. Like I, I, I was caught in a place where I had to start all over. And in this industry, you'll, you'll catch yourself, you know, build, 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 and then you have to start over, build, 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 start over. Mm. But after this fall and I had to restart, I was like, you know what? The only thing that hasn't failed me is God. And not like in a monetizing or like a, 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 a or a creating type of thing, just the feeling. Like I knew that if I made a hundred bucks, but I was with God, it's better than making a million bucks without God. That's right. So I told my mom and dad, I said, hey, I'm going to take this route um, on my podcast and I'm going to see where it goes. And while I'm taking this uh, opportunity, I haven't figured out where I want to go as an entertainer. I always talk to my parents, like, should I, should I, should I stop and just go into ministry? Or should I should I continue to do the entertainment? Because I love I have this whole project that we're doing right now, and I do love it. But I'm just trying to figure out now. I'm moving so much, and I'm seeing what God's doing in my life. That like I used to be like I'm gonna do this, and then talk to God about it. But now I'm like, all right, God, what do you want me mm -hmm. to do? And then we could talk about it. I don't want to take a step without you now, because what He's given me is so much more greater than everything. Like for example, her <laughs> is greater than any like. And in no disrespect, it is better than any girl that came up to me at a club or an opportunity at a stage or any, like you could line them all up. No disrespect, that's the most respect. Yeah, yeah, I, know. I just don't want to bring up a different girl, but it's just like every avenue, he's, he, every time he opens a door, it's the door. And yeah. you don't even want to like have a conversation about a different door. Yeah. So I started getting very, very comfortable with like, oh, I'm mixing my business now because I, I thought about it this way. Wait, hold on. In private, I ask God all the time you take control of my business. But in, in, in the public eye, I'm like, I don't even bring you up. Mm. So I'm like, all right, let's just see how this goes. I'm ready to risk it all because like I, I had the fame and the exposure, but without God, and it was just so empty. And it felt like you just keep digging and it's just like, you're always looking for joy and happiness. But I'm like, bro, I was like five years old getting made fun of every day and wow. I had more peace then. So like 
flipping a burger at Five Guys, I'm having more fun there. There's something happening here. So like I had to figure it out and it turns out it wasn't the lifestyle, it was God. I could bring God in any situation in my life and that's where the joy and peace comes from. Mm -hmm. So I had my own podcast and I started talking about deeper thoughts and people started kind of like really enjoying that version of me. And so I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'll go this direction. So I was talking to my mom yesterday and I, or a few days ago and I was like, should I go and should I quit? Should I just end the show and while it's high and then I go minister? And, and she goes, George, you, go, you are ministering. You're using your stage for God. Yeah. So right now, and I haven't really even flushed out the idea. That's why it's kind of hard to explain. Of but course. right now I'm just... I'm just I'm just rocking this life as a as a ride and I'm enjoying it. Like before I used to plan every step of mine, mm -hmm. but now my prayers are like God, you guide my steps. So it takes a huge load off of me. Like, oh, yeah. I don't even really need to think about my future as much as that sounds crazy because I always planned, planned, planned. I can't outplan God. Mm -hmm. So I, I got rid of planning for me and giving it to him. And I started do, like due diligently working on today. Yeah. And, it, and all of a sudden, just joy and peace started raveling around me. So right now, I, I don't know where my future is held. I just passed it off to him and I can't see the future. So I don't know if one day I'm going to be like, all right, now I'm out. Or I'm still in this industry, but I'm, you know, the light that's not hidden underneath the basket, but it's high placed above. I think the way I was raised from my parents of me being so open and vulnerable and like kind of fearless on like, if you judge me, I'm either going to weigh it to see if it's something I should really be understanding about or just toss it. That's my strongest skill set. I feel like I have. So ironically, a podcast would be the greatest position for me to be in is because I'm learning in front of people and I'm taking those mistakes instead of like having other people make it by themselves. Like mm. there was a marriage thing we talked about and I got roasted like out of my life, like on a Jordan Peterson episode and I just got grilled in the comment section, but it didn't hurt. Yeah. Because it, before if somebody <clears throat> talked about me on a, on, a, on a podcast or comments, I'd be like, oh no, what are they thinking? But like now I'm like, well, they're either pushing me in the direction of God yeah. or not. And now I, it's like I formed an ecosystem that is by God. My audience is by God. When we're done with the show, there's like 300 people lined up and they're all praying on me before <laughs> exiting. Blessings. I, I'm now my content, I'm more hyper aware of what I need to be. Uh, my, my swearing in an episode, two girls brought it up. Now I'm not swearing anymore. Like <laughs> I'm so proud. You're I'm so, so cool. But I'm, I, I you guys guess are amazing. I'm just taking the opportunity every day. And like, I, I used to plan my life like day by day, like, yeah. oh, this year I'm going to do this. But now it's just like, I gave my fruits to God. And when I eat the fruits that God gave me, it's just like, <laughs> yo, bro, come eat. And there's like, there's no like jealousy. There's no... Uh, envy, there's no um, pride because it's not me, it's from him and I'm willing to share this with anybody. Yeah. So if I am on top of the industry and in, in part of the culture or if I'm just at Five Guys flipping a burger, my peace is with God. And if it's me discussing the gospel with the guy getting a bag of fries or it's me on a microphone talking about whatever God feels useful for me, is that's where I find my peace. And it's a, it's a weird ego hit. Because as a kid, I was like, God, I want to be famous. Yeah. But now my prayers are like, God, I want heaven to know me. Ooh. Like, I want to dap up David and be like, David, did you see what I did? And he's going to be like, yeah, I saw what Yo, you did. I you know what I mean? I like, thought about that. I'm going to be like, Mary Magdalene, what's up, girl? You saw me down there. <laughs> she's, she's like, yeah, I saw that version of you where you thought you were a Christian. <laughs> yeah, Stop no, it, no, George. I'm, just Great. I'm like King David. She's like, uh, Mary Magdalene. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, it was a, it was a long, uh, long expression of where I'm coming from. And I, I apologize for like dragging it. It's no, just, you're it's not. just, it's still new. Um, as you guys are, you know, you guys just found each other and you guys found this lane and, uh, you know, there's some people going to knock you and there's yeah. some people going to lift you. But I think truly, if we all just focus on what God wants us from like us to do, that we're all going to make mistakes, but it's going to be a lot more full of grace. Of course. If that makes sense. Here's the thing. While you're talking, you said you don't know where your life is going to go, but you put it in God's hands. Well, you put on God's hands, you're good. Mm -hmm. You know, the scripture says that we plan our man plans his life, but the Lord orders our steps. Like we can try to plan as much as we want. We are massive control freaks all day long. That's what we used to try to do. And then the second we actually surrendered to God and said, we don't know anything. We have no idea what we're supposed to do. We're giving up everything that we think we want. God gave us everything we never asked for. That has been the best thing of our lives. I, before 
I think the best place we can go to, because I have so many questions for you, George, just simply on the fact that if people don't know, you were on Impulsive, which is a podcast that has been going on for I don't know how long, but you were on there for how many years? I think almost two. Two years? May maybe two, yeah. Yeah, uh, de yeah definitely two. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and so while you were on Impulsive, so if anybody doesn't know, it's it's like, a, you know, he was on this podcast that's very secular, very worldly, and it's a place in which Jesus is not talked about, nor is he welcomed, nor, um, well, and as we saw with you, George, that the moments that you brought up Jesus, which was often, and that is incredible and so bold of you to do, you were mocked. And you literally, just like you said, like you saw the Bible come to life in, in your life. You, we literally saw the Bible come to life in what you did, that you will be persecuted, you will be mocked and hated and made fun of just the way that Jesus was. Can I, can I say something? Though? I yeah. never felt that way. No, you didn't. Be, of course you didn't because you know why you're doing it. But like other people will, will you know, what you had a moment on there where, you know, somebody literally told you, if you don't mind me, we don't have to keep this. Oh, in. yeah, yeah. No, Are no, you okay? Oh, totally fine. Totally okay. Fine. So you had a moment where you talked about how, you know, you love Jesus and someone said that you need a therapist because you love Jesus mm. and you came back and you were always so kind so graceful so, okay so let me there's a ahead. two part for this while while I was preaching uh, and and even on our show now is I don't get on there and just preach I'm just discussing my conversations mm -hmm. with God right so you could care to listen or you don't have to like I, it's not like I don't have a church yet right and, and a lot of people yell at me for this but like my whole thought process is I am a blank canvas me and God, he's the artist. Mm. Watch what he's doing to me. Watch my mistakes. Learn from my mistakes or learn from my like successes. This is how I lived my life. I never was like, you should follow me because I'm still a mess. I haven't figured it out. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was on Impulsive, I was just speaking freely because, I, well, one, I wasn't used to podcasting. So I was just like talking, like <laughs> how I talk, got closed doors. And um, I got made fun of so much growing up. I learned a really special trick. No one is going to have a person that everybody loves. Yeah. There's going to be 50-50. Mm -hmm. You could concentrate on people that don't like you, or you could concentrate on God's people that really like you. Mm -hmm. So while I was preaching and everybody's like, yeah, how did you deal with that? I was like, how did I deal with that? I was on a big platform making money. I was hanging mm -hmm. out. I was traveling the world. Mm -hmm. Like when I saw people on the street, they were like, hey, nerd, you're the guy talking about God. <laughs> no, they were like, hey, dude, I like the way you speak about God. And it just takes one person to be like, yo, I, I found that really cool. And I was like, all right, I don't think God would be upset with me as this. So, like, I just kept going. If you're worried about what people think of you, dude, take God out of the equation. You're dead. Yeah. Because you are now morphing into other people's opinion of you, which, by the way, coming from a kid that learned to, like, maybe not talk ish about people, the only time I ever talked bad about people, I was jealous of them. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was envious. That's and so, so when I, like, flip that mindset, I'm like, okay, if, if they're making fun of me uh, speaking about God— me and my relationship of God is wrapped in love. They don't understand love. Oh, I don't want to even talk bad about you. I'm sorry. I'll pray for you. Like, I'm out. Genius. So that was that. And then everybody asks me. This is the first time they ever asked me on a podcast about that question. But, like, when Logan said you need a therapist, like, Logan was the man who gave me everything on earth. Mm -hmm. God sent him to open up that door. Uh, so, like, dude, I'm not looking at this man like, oh, he's trying to hurt my feelings. I'm seeing a man that was never introduced to Christ. And like, I, me and him are equally the same. Like when I mean that was my best friend, bro, like we used to do everything together, like everything together. I remember days where we would get so exhausted from hanging out. We would look at each other and we're like, you want to take a nap before we do more things? And we were literally just, he would be on that side of the room. I mean, we'd put 20 minutes naps and then wake up and then go outside and have fun. Like yeah. we were best friends. So if I would behave that way if I didn't know God. Yeah. So I can't forget this. If me and him are equal and I, I and we see each other like, and we're like, oh my God, we're still the same. But then when it comes to God and then he gets angry with me, okay, well, if I'm worth God and he's not with God, he can only be with one other thing. Mm. And if he's with that, then mm -hmm. he's full of lies and he's full of all these things. So I'm looking at my brother till now. I look at that man, he's my brother. And I, I told God, like, I'll do whatever it takes to get him to see who God is. If you get upset with somebody because they're mad at you for your love of God and you have no empathy for them, then you've missed the picture. Mm -hmm. Because God didn't come back on this earth to be like, oh, you don't understand who I am? Peace. Mm. No, he was, the last thing he said is forgive them for they don't know. Yeah. And there's so many things in my life where I think I know, I act like I know, I walk like I know, I talk like I know, and then reality hits me, I know nothing. Mm. So if I know nothing and I stand before God as an empty vessel, you expect me to judge my friend that not only put food on my table, money in my pocket, opportunity all around me, 
bro, that's my brother. He could hate me every day for the rest of his life. He's still my brother. I would wow. never see it differently. When I listen to you, I listen to a man that seriously has the Holy Spirit in your heart. That is, you come from love. And I relate to that so much because before I had Jesus, I and someone would come at me in rage, I would come back. I didn't understand. I would be so just angry. And now, since having Jesus in my life, when somebody comes at me angry, I look at them from a place of love. I'm like, they're hurting inside. Something's not right. And it just, your life will be so much more peaceful when you live like that. So thank you for sharing that because it's so true. It's so true. But it could get dangerous because like you loved that person at one point mm -hmm. and then now it separates you, right? Yeah. There's going to be a day where it's too late. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's too late to make the decision on who is your God. Mm. I'd rather not be in heaven with my king looking back saying like, that was my brother. I could have done something to yeah. like make that happen. Wow. Like, everything else is meaningless. Mm -hmm. The microphones, the cameras, like bro, even if this video gets a billion views, it's still meaningless. Like mm -hmm. in a couple of years, nobody would care. There's music videos that get a billion streams and we're like, well, that's sick. Tomorrow, you don't even remember it. Yeah. Nothing has meaning to it. When you really, really hold the value of it, everything has is gonna have dust, moth, rust, like everything. So the only thing you do have is each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and if you can't care for each other, then then what what is it worth anything else? Yeah. When I when I grew up in this industry, I wanted to be like an Adam Sandler. Where I would hang out with my friends and I would create content and we would just laugh. But then I grew up and realized some things are not funny. Something like especially now, like I was telling Bell this. I wanted to be an actor because I know how to like understand emotions. Mm -hmm. I could see you and I I could feel what you're going through. And that's not an over-exaggeration. In fact, throw the camera on, I'll reenact you and people will believe that it's me because I know how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. What if that wasn't given to me because I needed to pretend to be somebody else? What if I had to stop pretending, be who I am, and remember that I could feel other people's pains? Mm -hmm. So now I could communicate with you better. Actors are just amazing communicators. I could take what the script is saying and communicate it through my actions. So why would I not just take the gospel stories? They're already better stories. You know how many times I watch a movie? I'm like, God, this sucks, bro. Like, I just read King James, what he had to go through. <laughs> and I'm reading this. I'm like, this is terrible, so bro. Like, I don't even want to be a part of this. And now everything is getting a little bit more filthier. And, like, it's kind of sporadic. So I told God, if you want me to be a part of this industry, let me clean up with some talent. Because yeah. I don't want to be a part of this garbage, bro. Like, I don't mm -hmm. want to be a part of it. Even the people that don't believe in God look at the movies now. Like, this is garbage. I don't even want to be a part of it. So in my mind, I don't even like the industry anymore. I don't like what they're producing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to waste my third. 30s and 20s here doing this? No, no, no. Like, yeah. I, I can't. It's not how I am. So I asked God, what do you want from me? And he has a really fully, I mean, there is opening doors and stuff like that, but it gets tricky, right? Like I tell this to my mom, I go, let's not confuse success with God, right? Like Absolutely. my show is successful, but that doesn't mean like God is making it successful. Well, that's also right. it's kind of hard to say because like the blessings that are unfolding are ridiculous. My <laughs> mom thinks this is, a lot of people think this is, but I'm I'm so uh, hyper nervous that I'm lying to myself mm -hmm. because, dude, I, my whole life I just lied to myself in aims lying to that. Yourself about what? Oh, if I'm in the industry, nothing bad will happen. If I'm in the industry, I could do this, I could do that, and it's just like, or like, or I'll give you an example. Like, I already had sex once, so might as well just keep having sex. Yeah. Like, I always lie to myself, and so once I figured this problem out, uh, I'm like, man, I'm my own, I'm my own problem. Yeah. I read a scripture that says sin doesn't come at you, it comes through you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have to challenge myself. And a lot of people would rather challenge their surroundings, and I realize that's a waste of time. Nobody else could do anything to me. Mm -hmm. Like, even her. She's my partner. She can't do anything to me. Mm -hmm. I could do something to me. Mm -hmm. So it's it's in a level of, like, understanding. It, it really is between you and God and your flesh. Yeah. So there's a spirit in you that wants to, like Paul <laughs> says, you know, I do the things that I, I, I shouldn't. And I and the things I should I don't, mm. um, and he's the top G, yeah. Not not Andrew Tate. <laughs> but also, can I can I just say like what you were saying? I think too the difference though between you now and like you a few years ago is that yeah you would have made the choices because you're like well I want to do it and like this sounds good to me and like I think this is fun and so if I'm a good boy then God will be okay with it. Yeah. But now you're leading your life completely differently because you don't lean on your understanding. You're always leaning on God's understanding. Mm, yeah, fair. And so I think that if you felt like you were walking down the wrong path, 
you would feel that like in your heart. Yeah. And I think with every step that you've taken, certainly with a podcast, you know, you're leading down like, okay, is this right by God? Am I, am I doing what's right? Am I treating the people around me well? Am I doing something beneficial for the Lord, not just for myself? Yeah, it's you know? overwhelming because like before I would just create and just like let it fly into the internet. And now like when I put out, I'm like, oh, like the conversations that I'm having are very real and meaningful, but that's dangerous because if I come at it in the wrong step and then I position somebody else's foot to go in the wrong step, oh yeah, bro, I'm going to answer to that. And that's daunting. And mm -hmm. the devil always gets in my head to make me wrap it up and leave. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I just, that's why I'm always saying, yo, I don't got to figure it out. I'm just expressing what I have and God willing, like he'll he'll help me through it. Sorry for burping. I just got really nauseous. <laughs> That's okay. Like, no, and like, like let it, me just say this so man. No, so this man stresses on his heart, like about no. the, how he makes other people feel around him, how he like guides somebody or somebody wrongly. Like it weighs on him so no, heavily because beautiful. he just wants to. He literally only wants to do what's best for the people around him. And if he's giving somebody advice or wisdom or anything like that it like daunts him that it's only leading them in the right way and of not the course. wrong way, you know? It well, came out of yeah. nowhere, by the way. Like, dude, like, and I'm not sitting here trying to boast myself, but it went from like, I was the mocked character. And, yeah. Like, th that like, oh, don't even talk. Nobody really cares what you say to like, oh, we really care what you say. What are you saying? And now I'm like, whoa, okay. Like, hold on. Like, I, uh, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm, yeah. I'm just regurgitating what I think I know. Yeah. And so like, it scares me sometimes that like people will come up to me and uh, just, people get very emotional when they see me in their life. Yeah. And when they see me, I realize that it's impacting them in a way that my mother impacted me because my mom would say stuff to me that would make me like, oh, like it would just sit in my heart and I'd cry and I'd sit there and I'd ponder it. And then I realize I'm giving to these homes what my mother gave to me. Mm -hmm. And it's nerve wracking because like my mom was such a perfect woman to do it. I'm scared that I do it in a wrong way and I push somebody off the wrong, like. Trust me. Yeah, yeah it's, we, it's, it's nerve wracking. One of, so Ari and I's biggest thing on here is that we, I mean, you heard our prayer when we start. You guys have no idea. We pray all day long that God has control over our tongues. Like we are so serious about the fact that we understand and you guys are in the same position where when God blesses you with influence, but it's from God, it's a different type of influence. It's an influence that literally you make one move and people will do the same thing that you do. I imagine you're experiencing that. We know that that's happening with us too and we're so grateful, but the second that it started, we had that weight that you're saying, that daunting feeling, it's weight, it's responsibility. And it's good to feel that it should be heavy because we should understand that we are leading people. God has put us in this position of leadership and Ari and I are so scared to ever lead anyone astray. For example, recently I had posted a photo. So probably one of my biggest struggles or wrestles is um, between modesty and the things I wear and like posting and just the way in which I, uh, you know, present myself. And I had posted something and I am in this wrestle where I, I'm trying to, you know, decipher God's voice between the opinions of other people because we get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments and I don't know sometimes if they're right. I don't know. And then I don't know if it's my OCD talking that they're getting in my head or if it really is God. So I had posted something and I was getting a little bit of backlash on it and I kept on praying and I kept on asking God, like, please, like, make it, let me know if this is from you or not. I don't want to be at everybody. I don't fear of man people pleasing. Like, I can't live at everybody's mercy. And so... I saw a comment that said, it was a girl that said, um, someone had commented something and then a girl responded and said, yeah, I just came to her page and I feel really disappointed. I feel really misled. I deleted that photo so <laughs> fast. And I was like, I will put a bag over my head and delete my Instagram because what I- was it? Nothing, yeah. not even like- I never see you post anything that I'm like, whoa, Angela. It, it was, like, it was- She our, was wearing was a twerking dress. video, we're like, no, oh, no, okay. No, no, like, yeah, no, maybe, uh, <laughs> Like, didn't see that. It was me in a dress, but I and I. How you know, dare you! I know, <laughs> and God and I have been, you know, we've been working through everything together, and it's like this whole journey that Ari and I are both kind of going on. But in that moment, just hearing the words, I feel misled, truly wrecked me to the point where I like it again instilled that healthy fear of God of like He gave me this, He can take it from me. But the thing is, George, like there are two things we have to do. You have to think and pray about everything, but you also have to not think too much. If you're in right standing with God, if you're close to Jesus and you're in the word every single day and you're praying about everything, 
you have to trust not yourself, but the God in you to make the right decisions. Because when you're in right standing with God, you're going to go the way that he wants you to go. And if you go off course, he'll nudge you back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But Don't if, chase perfection. Mm. Don't, no, but we also have to be so aware of the responsibility that we have. Like we know, like we are so, I mean, we triple check everything that we say to make sure. And it's, it's if it sounds like an opinion, we check with scripture to make sure it's right. Would you wear that dress? Yeah. You should have never taken it down. And can you, I, oh, you can't, you can't, you can't, um, you can't please everyone. And if you felt like you bought that dress, and you felt like, okay, like I would want to meet my husband in this dress or I wouldn't feel inappropriate wearing this in front of my father or my mother. If that girl feels misled, then let her leave away. Mm -hmm. You can't come down on yourself so hard because then you're going to go so far past that you're not even going to be a real human being. You're going to be an edit of what the internet wants you to be. I make mistakes yeah. all the time in front of people. I'll own it if I feel in my heart it's right. If it sticks with you, then you know it's wrong in your heart. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't stick with you, well, by the way, this will take time. You guys are so new. You guys weren't just like speaking. You learned about God and then you got a platform. These are very two really big things. Chase God first and always be content and joyful with him. But if you felt like your daughter were dressed like that and you had no problem, then yeah. you shouldn't be coming too hard down on yourself. It wasn't so much the dress as it was. Okay, let's honestly just talk about it. I so I was at a premiere and it wasn't so much what I was wearing because what I was wearing was fine. It was the posing and it was like that we were on a carpet and these are things that I don't even do anyway. And the reason why I took it down, not only because the girl said that I misled her, was because I really did see myself in a way that God was asking me to lay these things down down in the sense that like I don't need to be kind of like using my looks in any way to get any sort of attention anymore which is something that I've and all of us have done our whole lives and so in that moment I did feel a clarity from God that it was the right thing I wouldn't have deleted it had I not you know what I mean and I did feel like some of I, I did feel like that is what God wanted me to do in that moment but yeah, I mean, that's a wrestle. That's something that we go, that we're all going to go through. And you guys, I, we wanted to talk about this because you guys are in the same space as we are, that like we grew up loving Jesus, but we didn't follow his word. We didn't do everything the right way. We came from the world thinking we were really good Christians. And then we get some Christian friends and we're like, oh, we're not actually as good as we think we yeah. are. You know what I mean? Well, who's good? Jesus. But you know what I mean. But you know what but I the, mean. You got to remember these things because you're gonna be you're gonna be very very hard on yourself. I could already see it on you guys. Like you you guys need to make sure that you're like, just stand in front of God. Every day, just stand before God but with that yeah. dress, with that post. Like, don't don't think you have to be punished for being beautiful. Like, if you're beautiful, <laughs> God made you beautiful for a reason. Like, there's no you should never ever ever feel ashamed and feel like oh I have to use my my tongue right. I'm a great speaker. If somebody's like wow you gotta talk too much. They said that to me every single day growing up, but mm -hmm. I use that for God. Now, if you are a beautiful girl and you're standing before the world as a beautiful girl, stand with confidence. Your God made me beautiful. Now, if you're sitting there like this and you're like, hey, guys, I just opened up an OnlyFans, there's a massive difference from you on a red carpet feeling beautiful and presenting yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. You should never, ever feel ashamed of that. Yeah. Now, mind you, I haven't seen the picture, so like, I don't know exactly what I was going on. I saw the post, and I, I agree with what he's saying. I think you were just, you're on the carpet. You're posing for a picture, and you were, you were looking beautiful. You're looking at the camera and you're making yourself look, you know, like fl in flattering angles. Like I really didn't see anything wrong with it. But I understand like, you know, your conviction, how you feel is how you're going to feel. Yeah. But I think something like that's come up like a lot of times that I've seen is I, and for a lot of people to remember this is like as Christians, we're supposed to be understanding. We're supposed to be non-judgmental. We're supposed to be forgiving and like give people grace. And I see a lot of times that I feel like sometimes there's a lot of people seem very righteous in a way where they don't even give you that grace. And it's like, you guys are learning. We're all learning. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, maybe let's say, if, let's just say that post was wrong, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then that person should give you the grace to know that like, okay, like she made a, maybe she made that bad move, but like she's learning and with every step, like she's going to get better or whatever yeah. that might be. I and mean, I think we shouldn't be so harsh and judgmental. EarthBreeze Eco Sheets look just like a dryer sheet, but it's ultra concentrated, liquidless laundry detergent. It's the best of all worlds. EarthBreeze is tough on stains and odors while being kind to the planet and on your skin. 
EarthBreeze Eco Sheets are dermatologist tested, hypoallergenic, and free of bleach, dyes, and parabens. There's also a fragrance free option. EarthBreeze got rid of unnecessary chemicals for a formula that is kind to sensitive skin of all ages, including babies. EarthBreeze is a more convenient option. No more heavy lifting or measuring sticky blue goo from a massive plastic jug. EarthBreeze's lightweight cardboard packaging takes up a fraction of the space in your laundry room versus traditional detergent. I think you should give it a try. And if you decide to go back to your old stuff for some reason, you get a full refund on your EarthBreeze's purchase. No questions asked. EarthBreeze reduces plastic waste. These tiny sheets can stop millions of detergent jugs from entering our ecosystems. In fact, 500 million detergent jugs end up in landfills and oceans every single year. Right now, my listeners can receive 40% off EarthBreeze just by going to earthbreeze.com slash ggb. That's earthbreeze.com slash ggb to cut off single-use plastic in your laundry room and claim 40% off your subscription. earthbreeze.com slash ggb. Thank you, EarthBreeze, for sponsoring this video. There's going to be a person that looks at you and says... I can't believe she's wearing this unfollow. And then there's gonna be another young girl that's looking at Ariana Grande's and all these other influencers. And they're gonna say, they're, well, they're, she's pretty, but then she sees you and she's like, wow, she's beautiful. Oh, and she speaks of God. Like yeah. the, anybody could see it from any point of view. That's why you gotta stick true to yourself. If you picked up that dress and you're like, I don't think God would be ashamed of me wearing this, then I'm gonna wear this. And if I wanna post an angle where I look beautiful, that's totally fine. Now, mind you, this is the problem. If you read that comment and you felt it already, then then you gotta be like, okay, I felt just like this. Cause I felt like that when there was times where she would be like, no, you're overthinking it. And I said, no, I've already been thinking this way. Mm. So for her to say that or him to say that, that just confirmed my thought, then by all means, then you could take down the pictures yeah. but because that's be between you and God. Yeah. But you can't bend to the way of the world. That's everybody used to tell me about the swearing thing all the time. Yeah. And I was able to filter them out or I was able to move around, but if I am moving fakely in front of God, that's going to hurt me more. Yeah. I didn't stop swearing because of a comment. I stopped swearing because you made a good point. Mm. And then I was like, okay. And then guess what? You know how many people since then has dapped me up and they're like, yo, bro, I actually stopped swearing because of you. That's I can't, so I can't sick. even tell. I'm talking <laughs> like I'm not exaggerating. I'm talking over a hundred people have came up to me and said I that. I can't believe In person. It. Do not in just DMs. Over a hundred wow. people have came up to me and said that. So imagine if I would have been like, oh, I, I got to like the first person, but I really didn't feel it that way, no. right? I moved with fake conviction. It wasn't right. on God's timing. But then when you moved me, I moved in real oh. conviction. And that had a bigger bigger problem like god solved it in front of the whole world and now there's other people trying to solve it so like you shouldn't move on the conditions of other people's mouth yeah. you should move in the condition of your lord your lord's mouth uh, definitely my tongue's twisting but i hope no, i'm coming off properly truth. Yeah, yeah no absolutely <laughs> that's speaking in pounds when your tongue fails you <laughs> do you catch yourself now when you if because you know if you go to swear and oh you're talking oh it's, so, it's Are you, you feel it now when right? i'm angry it's so funny when I'm angry, it, it flies out. Like, oh, it yeah. flies out like crazy. And then it feels nasty. I'm I like, know. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Once oh, you go, you can't funny? go back. That's why in the scripture it says, whoever has eyes that want to see. You could see whatever you want to see. Seeking you should find, knocking the door shall be open. is isn't just for God. Yeah. It's for everything in your life. If you want to be a money, power, hungry human being, guess what? It's here. Yeah. Right. You you search for it. If you if I get up every single day and I, I stand before God and I'm like, I'm not perfect. I know that. I threw that away a long time ago. That's a lot of weight to hold on to you. Now I'm going to work on myself in front of people. It's actually pretty cool. Once you really master the fact that like, all right, uh, God looks at me like I'm just a pile of dirt. Yeah. And I need him for everything. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to give him all the glory, then why am I giving myself all the anxiety? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I'm going to pass the anxiety to him. Like, oh, I posted a dress. This girl got upset with me. God, could you next time give me the ability not to be in that position? That was really embarrassing. That hurt me. I don't want to mislead this person. Yeah. But then also God might say, no, I want you to fail a hundred times in front of people mm -hmm. so they can see you get up a hundred times with yeah. me. So sometimes you got to stop playing God. 
And start For playing sure. with God. Th this is the thing, though, because we're talking about, like, comments and people saying things. I will say that the Christian, because me and Ari both, before we became, like, super, super, you know, about that life, we would always be like, God, the Christians, they're so annoying. They're so righteous. They so blah, blah, blah. They actually, like, kind of saved our life. They did. Um, when we first started the podcast, <laughs> their criticism truly changed our life in the best way possible. There is something called righteous judgment, and I know yeah. that you guys know totally. this. And, like, it's like... like you guys did it to me, dude. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> the speck in your eye. So it's like you can't call someone out for sin if you're doing the same sin. We're all sinners regardless. But if you do see someone doing something that's not right, you should judge them and you should call them out for it. But I will say you cannot call yourself a true Christian and be writing nasty things no. on the bottom of people's yeah. photos. There's that a way is of not a Christian it. or a person you. of God, 100%. period. <laughs> yeah, Shauna, mean, stop. stop. You know me. I it was so on her Finsta <laughs> too, dude. Not even with her <laughs> own account. Imagine that's our comment. We're like, I can't believe she wore that. Miss <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what were we gonna say? But no, there's just a right way to come at people, and you judge people, but there's there's a way to come at people. Uh, well, can I speak to your audience real quick? Yeah. Uh, hi guys, George here. Uh, there's a lot of people that are watching this full passion, like full passion. Like uh, before you even leave a comment, for those of you guys that really believe in Christ, before you leave a comment, uh, pray to God. Mm. Our audience, I I kind of always tell them like, hey, don't like and comment. Pray. But then she just randomly just goes in the corner and prays. And that whole day, God just puts something on my neck. And it makes me come to me, to her on my hands and knees and say, That's I'm right. so sorry. Beautiful. There's something greater than us. That's right. That is a part of it. So if you see something, instead of being like, I feel misled, <laughs> you should really just be like, hey, God, I see that they have a lot of, uh, they have a big platform and they have a lot on their, on their plate right now. Instead of leaving a comment that might, you know, put them off the right path. Let me uh, leave a comment in a positive way, but also let me pray that if it is for them, let them open up their ears and eyes to this. That will go a lot longer and it'll give you guys a lot more peace and joy. Mm -hmm. But you guys really got to master your own peace. Yeah. Because I, I promise you, the devil is not a fast attack. He's a slow and steady attack. He's mm -hmm. a very precise. He knows the timing. He watches you guys patiently like a roaring lion. If you guys are going to get overwhelmed by your audience, he will bring you guys down by your audience. He will use your audience to go against you and bring you guys down. And also, you got to remember... Did she beat gang? You would never go You're not going to leave, right? right? Yes. Please don't. We love each other so much. And can They're I just, just back say, there watching like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there are family. And can I just literally. say, because I don't want to cut you off when you were bringing this up this part, but truly... Truly, <laughs> like sometimes you know, there's just certain things that like are hard to bring up in a relationship because you're like, I don't it's know so how I'm gonna say this. He's yeah. not gonna take this the right yeah. way. Like it's just it's a it's a really hard awkward thing to bring up whatever it might be, mm. and I bring it to God, and God literally makes my life so easy, and he, he takes care of it for me. Like I didn't have to go and have this awkward terrible conversation. Probably wouldn't have gone the right way. Like that's why I think Thank it's so Jesus. important to have God in your relationship and to lead it that way because then He truly, like helps you mend that relationship because then when I have an issue, you know, and I know that George is listening to God and wants to be led by him, then he takes and he's able to like, you know. Absolutely. We'll and get into your guys' relationship. Go ahead. Just to speak on this, uh, she said that I never pushed her into believing or reading or doing all that stuff is because the best form of preaching is by action. Mm -hmm. And if you're a man who's telling his woman to do something, but you know you're failing in that, mm. it, it's a slippery slope. She'll lose respect for you. Mm because she's seeing you as bossing her around. Mm -hmm. But if I'm leading the pact and I'm moving this way, she's either gonna come with me or be left behind. That's a hard thing to understand. Mm -hmm. I told her I'll never love her as much as God. So this lifestyle that I, I is, is cut and show for me, God's gonna put a woman for me. It's either you are the woman for me or you're not. I can't mm -hmm. sit here and, and melt to think that you're not for me. I look at Belle at my highest moments. I'm like, I can't believe I love you this much. Like, it, it's actually sometimes it hurts. And then you get this anxiety like, oh, my God, what if she leaves? If you really master the fact that your Lord will replant you something even better. I told her, I go, listen, if I get out of line with you, correct me with God or just leave. Yeah. 
because the God will replace me by a man a hundred times better than me. Mm. Never fear me. Fear the Lord. Fear disappointing him as a woman besides disappointing me. Because once you fear him, then you'll be according to me. And once I fear him, I'll be according to you. Mm. If we have our eyes on Christ, we can't fail. But if I'm sitting here be like, I got to be like this, or I'm not tall, so I got to stand on my money. If I start acting with my emotions, then I'm going to be acting with the devil, mm. and I'm going to start wilding out. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's all, folks. That was so good. <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys later. Yo, Jeff. Jesse's like back there, he's like, yo, what's up, Jesse? And it's so true what you said too about like you being pushy and whatever, because you're leading by your actions. Because if he's pushy on me and he was like, why aren't you reading? Why aren't you studying? Blah, blah, blah. Then as somebody who doesn't fully understand that relationship with God, then I would have been like, on the days where he does fail, because we all do, I would have been like, well, why aren't you reading? Well, yeah. you haven't studied in a week, so what are you on me for? Wait, you haven't done this, you haven't done that. And then that would have pushed me more away, because I was like, well, clearly you're not doing what you're telling me that you think I should be doing. While we're on the topic of relationships, you guys are doing something so incredible in the culture as a whole right now. I want to talk about, you're saying that when you invite Jesus into your relationship, when you invite the Holy Spirit into your relationship, there is so much conflict and tension that can be avoided. There's resentment that can, like resentment is the number one relationship killer. And the Holy Spirit will come in and he will strip you of all that resentment. The Holy Spirit will give you the ability to see your partner the way that God sees you, which is just lovingly and beautiful. As opposed to naturally as humans, we resort back to like looking at what annoys us about the other person. I don't know why we're like that we all just do it it's so much easier to focus on somebody's bad than their good Mm -hmm. but God he changes that he gives you eyes to see the way that he sees Mm -hmm. so what you guys are doing right now you guys just got engaged yeah congratulations the rock is beautiful thank you Um, can we see it (laughs) can we see it where do I put it it's so good congratulations (laughs) good job George (laughs) and you know it's we're in this time where marriage is not celebrated traditional values are not celebrated Ari and I are not yet married but we are so pro traditional values Mm -hmm. gender roles in a relationship God's design the way that marriage the way that he intended it to be and doing God's God doing things God's way and you guys are in a position where you know you have this huge platform you have fame you have you know you have it all why as a man are you gonna settle down and get married when you could technically have, you know, probably more than one woman. You know what I mean? It's really easy in LA. You get a little bit of clout gets you a long <laughs> way in LA. Let's be real. You know what yep. I mean? And you guys are choosing to get engaged and married at what is for LA very young. That's a huge deal. And you're going to shift culture by just doing that. You're showing people what it's like to do life in the way that God intends you to do it, which is to get married to somebody that you love and not just wait in in hopes that you can get someone better and then change it up when you get bored. Mm -hmm. Not be 48 in the club doing ketamine. Yeah. (laughs) Dude, thank you. My my dad's biggest... uh, (laughs) First of all, what? (laughs) What? Wait, I did. I, I, I heard Yo. that. Who are you hanging out? Cocaine's a big one, but like no. ketamine. Uh, wait, you, you, you hanging out the wait. trailer parks? Where are you? Where are you know partying? I'm living in LA. That's why. Ketamine. And I'm sure you see the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ketamine. That's a pretty. You like, guys have no strong. idea. Uh, no, you guys have no it's idea. It's dark in these streets of LA. Uh, my parents both came from a different country. They didn't have anything. I, I was wise enough to learn from my parents. I, I respected my parents, so I I took a lot that they wanted to give me. And I didn't have friends growing up, so they were my friends, you know what I mean? So like, the world would say one thing and my parents would say another, I always leaned on what my parents said. Okay, now that I know that, marriage is a very, 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 very powerful thing in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible, in Proverbs, it says it's it's higher than any jewelry, any money, any everything. Mm -hmm. A good woman is is the greatest gift from God. So when I came back to my senses and started following God fully with my heart, or well, as much as I could try. Yeah. I, I'm looking at my my surroundings. I see men that are very successful, they have a lot of money, and they're putting out their Instagram stories that are hanging out with girls, but I know you're sad. Mm. I know you're lonely. I can't hide that. I'm behind the filter. I see you for what you are. So I'm like, okay, cool. I don't want to be that guy who's alone. And also, like, when you grow up and you're a man, I'll be vulnerable for men. Like, you, you when you're, I don't care. You're, you're insecure now in your 20s. <laughs> you have any idea how insecure you're going to be when you're 30-something years old at the club and the girls are young? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool when they look up to you because you're that older guy, but that's going to grow into the, you're the older guy. Oh. You're old. 
and now you're fighting for attention in a different way. But the worst part of all of that is while you are in the club and you're trying so hard, you have to remember you threw away good things. And there's a lot of good women that get tossed around. Like I could have taken her and, 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 and gone in a completely different direction. And now her history is my history. So she's going to get tossed back into the streets and now she's going to take that behavior and go that direction mm. with it. Okay. So I got presented an amazing woman and I said I could lead by example or I could lead her into her own demise. Mm. The whole red pill mentality is like the man is a leader. And there's a lot of women that are like, no, men are not leaders. That's not gospel. I am the leader of my house. Mm -hmm. I am in charge of my home. But that just puts more responsibility on me. Mm. Now I am a higher servant than mm -hmm. she is. I, anytime she puts a home cooked meal in front of me, I truly think, dude, when my friends come over, they're like, yo, bro, did she just put a hot meal in front of you? Hmm. And this is three times a day. When I grew up, my mom did that for my dad every day. So that wasn't weird to me. That was yeah. like, oh, she's she loves me. She's presenting me a meal. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then my friends are like, bro, you have no idea. Like, I, I've, like, that's crazy. I took that because if I'm hearing that, then that means out there you're not getting that. So I'm like, okay, wait, wait, wait. I could sit here and point out all the flaws that she has, or I could sit here and praise God for all the good that she's presenting me. And once I fixed my focus into being like, wow, I'm so blessed that she's like this and she acts like this. And if we run into a situation that she is not in accordance to what I feel is good for my life, mm -hmm. two things happen. I present it to her. She either fixes it or God fixes it or we move on. Yeah. People need, I know a lot of people want to either like, they think that it, it, if you find something, it's perfect. I look in the mirror and I hate myself. Mm. There's times where I look, I'm brushing my teeth and I go, dude, you suck. Like, I hate you. And I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, you <laughs> suck, dude. So how am I going to not look at this girl every single day? And there's going to be times where I'm like, bro, like, you're annoying me. Like, get away from me. Like, go over there. Like, yeah, nice. that's that's fine. <laughs> we go through I'm that with each other. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? That's fine. And I think people think that it needs to be perfect. It yeah. doesn't need to be perfect. You just got to be patient. You gotta be patient and loving and want to work with it. But if I would have been like sitting on my high throne, like, oh babe, like I got all these girls lined up and I got all this money in the bank and I got all this, no, 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 fix your focus. God has presented me a good woman while also presented us financed so we could start a family. Mm -hmm. And I have an abundance of fame right now. So I'm gonna use this to catapult our family and God willing other people's family. If I don't think this way, God giveth, but God will take it. Right. And when you have something and it's been taken away from you, that thirst is something you can never quench. And the rest of your life, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to sit there and be like, oh, I, I was the one that murdered this relationship. Sin oh. is death. And if I brought sin into this relationship, I just murdered this relationship. That's my doing. That's not God's mm. doing. That's my doing. So I could either take it and exalt it together with the Lord, or I could play with fire until I get burned. It's yeah. your choice. Wow. Oh my gosh, that was just so good. You I could get my book in Amazon. I, yeah. I'm just gonna have a book. But I will so also say, like, you know, and I think to that is that I think what was beautiful about the beginning of our relationship is that from the very beginning, George was like, I think we were what maybe the second night that we were hanging out, and you're like, hey, if we're gonna be in, we're gonna be together, we're gonna be in a relationship, like. I need us to pray together. You know, I need Sh to stop. Mm -hmm. You said it that early. Well, we were we were uh, we were like immediately. Uh, talking about like we we fell in love very quick, Guys. like very very quick. I was I, seeing I somebody else. She was seeing somebody else. We were you, dating. Yeah. What's okay? What's what? the story? How did it go? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was seeing like three chicks at that time. I'm, I'm being real. Like this. Okay, so you didn't have a serious relationship. Man, girls on rotations. I was not in a great place. Like I was just. <laughs> like, I was also in a place where I was like, I told him, I was like, I don't want to be in a relationship. I just because I had been in a long one before, and mm. so I had like <clears throat> this was to, this was, had been like a year since my old relationship, and I was like, I'm young, and I'm just seeing people casually. I do not want to a relationship or anything like that. Like please, nothing. Yeah. You know. And he felt the same way. I think. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Did you ever have moments where you were like? I'm not ready. Like, I'm not ready to get married, but you knew that she was such a good woman. You could not pass that up. Uh, I always have a fear of disappointing God. Mm -hmm. And when I met her, I was like, oh, this is different. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, you could feel it's different. Mm -hmm. The first time I ever said I love her, like, 
It was the first time my tongue actually locked it, in my wow. life. It was at I Disneyland. I was about to, I had like this whole thing set up, but I knew it's right so before good. I said it, I was like, oh, this is going to possibly be the last time that I say this for the wow. first time. So I think every man knows, right? And if you don't know, pray on it. But I did know. So I, I walked into it being like, I hate, it sounds very disrespectful, but I saw a few of my friends that are a little older and I just had a flash. I'm like, I could either run with this and, and, and have God plant this into being. Because like when we met, we we're nowhere near where we are now. Mm -hmm. It blossomed to something even better than what we had. Mm -hmm. But that happened because we gave it to God. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. th th like this can is a can, but if I give it to God, oh my God, what can it not be? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's, in the, it's in the hands of the creator. So I gave this relationship for the first time. This is the first time I ever did that. And that's why it worked out. I don't think it was me, and I don't think it was her. I don't think it was serendipity. I don't think it was a perfect time. I don't think it was the right time, the right place. She's the right girl. She had to had nothing to do with any of no. that. Mm -hmm. It had to do with the fact of one man mm. that saw a girl said, God, you take the wheel here. Mm. Sometimes that wheel is the next exit. Hey, this isn't the one for you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people need to sit in silence with God. Sometimes they think that God's mad at them when they don't have what they want. No, God knows what you want. He's just waiting for the better opportunity. Amen. So you have to you have to wait in God. And and also it's like don't disrespect God. You are not God. Don't tell God what to do. No. Don't say God, well I'm 28 years old and I have no girl. Well guess what, buddy? You're going to be 32, your girl's going to be 22. I guarantee you, you're not going to be mad at the fact that she's a little younger than you. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? There's yeah. a lot of time that people want to place and tell God hey, but, yeah, yeah for it's sure. Because so many people, they put so much pressure on it. And they're yeah. like, no, it needs to happen right now. And they look and look and look and yeah. look. It's not going to happen when you're forcing it, when you're looking for it. It's literally when, and I know so many people say this, but it's so true. It's when you are not expecting mm -hmm. it, you're not looking for it, and it'll just happen. And it shouldn't be so hard, too. I mean, and maybe we just got lucky, and it's just a really big blessing. But I think that for us, it just... It was inevitable. Like as much as we were like, oh, and like I'm like, no, I want to be friends, and he's probably like, oh, I don't want to get serious right now. It just like fell into place, and it just happened because it was just meant to happen, and we just fell in love because it's what felt right. Like time apart from him felt wrong. You know, mm. I only wanted to be like with him, and so it was easy. And yeah. falling in love was something that was just like it was just a gift. You know uh, what I mean? Also, so, there's a is a we're not the same people. No. And sometimes growing could grow apart, and yeah. sometimes growing could grow together. Absolutely. I think God put a foundation around us, mm -hmm. like boundaries. So, like, we grew together. We intertwined instead of separating, right? You, so You guys have Jesus. I know. That's you what guys it is. have Jesus. You need Jesus. No, I can't even imagine how a relationship could be successful without Jesus. Of course you're going to grow apart most of the time. It's not when successful he's not without the, him. Well, also, the cool part is, like, she grew into a, an incredible woman. Like, bro, I met her you're when You're the 19. best, yeah. Sean. You grew up to be an incredible woman, and I grew up to be a way better man than I was before. Yeah. But here's the problem. Like, if I never had her, I would have never thought this way, right? So, like, if I didn't have, like, oh, look, there's a, okay. Sometimes fear could be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God could use the devil to for his own tool. He could use the devil. And you know, they say things are forged in the fire. Mm. The devil plays with fire. Sometimes God uses the devil for you to get back into check. When I was dating her, all these insecurities were in my head. Like, okay, like, I have money and fame now, but what if I run out and this girl's, like, used to this lifestyle and then now she wants to go and date so-and-so? Yeah. Like, what if she grows up to realize that, dude, the last guy, and I don't mean to bring this up, you could cut this out, but the last guy like <laughs> was like, yo, you're too good for me. I don't even know. He was overwhelmed by her. I felt the same way. When I met her, I, was I knew she was this. so, like, so like cool and hot and like everything I was like oh dude she's gonna wake up and realize who, she, who I am one day and she's gonna want to walk away all these thoughts accumulated in my head but I didn't run for them so I'm like okay those are real thoughts as should a man think I need to make sure I provide I need to make sure that this lifestyle is okay and it's in accordance to God there's all these thoughts now I could run away from them or I could prepare myself for war mm -hmm. yeah make myself the man that I should be thank you and if it is money that we need then it'll give us money. And if it's money that we don't need, get rid of the money. Mm. You have to think this way. You have to think according to God. And, and you can't be attached to certain things. In fact, until I put a ring on her finger, I wasn't attached. Until the moment I put a ring on her finger, she was out at any moment. If she moved in a way that wasn't according to God, I'd be like, peace, I'm out. Like, no problem. And once you put your love and your heart in God's hands, and you're like, hey, like, you take this relationship, it's in your hands, mm -hmm. then everything else is going to go so much easier. So much easier. When I'm traveling on my trip, there's two types of women. One who does not know God and does not fear God. 
and there's one that terrifyingly fears God. Yeah. Who do you think I'm going to be worried about while I'm gone? Yeah. Do you think I'm going to be worried about Belle? No. Yeah. Bro, but when I had my other chicks, oh my God, bro, I'm looking at their stories, their friends' stories. Like, <laughs> what do you mean that's how I felt when you stopped yeah. to travel for Impulsive all the time? I was, okay, as you hold on, really quick. Can I, uh, okay, we, as you should, I want to <laughs> talk about the fact, okay, so I want to get it from both of you because I want you to talk to the girls, I want you to talk to the guys. I want us to both talk about insecurity and jealousy in a relationship if that's something you guys used to experience. First, I want to say Shauna is the most down, loyal girl. I, I, no, truly, down. the way that you look at him, the way that you can like defend him. No, this is like I know the man is the leader and he is, but there's something about a strong woman that keeps the man mm -hmm. up. You are so loyal, and you being as loyal as you are to him gives him of like it. Get, he sits differently because of how loyal you are to him. It's a structure <laughs> that can't be broken. Mm -hmm. So thank you for doing that for him. And like we, everybody should take a page out of your book yeah. in that sense. You can tell the way you look at him. Seriously, it's a good foundation for all this spine of the family. I used to tell that to everybody. Like Absolutely. The, the wife is the spine of the family. Yo, yeah, 100%. Well, thank so, you. You guys are so nice. I really appreciate it. But I, I honestly, I don't know. It's not, I'm, I feel wrong like taking the credit because I'm just, I don't know. He makes it easy for him because I'm just truly like, I'm just truly so in love with him and he does the same thing for me. He gives me so much security, you know, wow. like the way that he's been so loyal, so honest, like such an honest, loyal man. That when he is away, when he is on trips, like he makes that job easy for me. Mm -hmm. But as you said, like talk about you know jealousy things yeah. like that. Still, like I'm a girl, <laughs> so you know, like I we had to go through so many tribulations where I created problems in a relationship because yeah, I would get insecure, I get jealous. Like, what are you doing? Who are you with? Like, where are you? Like, well, what I don't understand. Where he's given me only the actions of a loyal, trusting man, but I still would fall to my insecurities and my worries, right? But we all do, yeah. and I think that that's something like. What I think I've learned in our relationship is that in the beginning of your relationship, it's the honeymoon phase. Everything is amazing. You guys are learning about one another. You're coming into this relationship fresh, right? Yeah. So you're secure. You're confident. You're like, well, if you want to be with me, then, then you're with me, right? So it's very, everything is amazing. And then I think once your relationship starts to go, you guys start to get comfortable with one another. You're going to start to learn how to, like, deal with issues, deal with problems. Your insecurities are going to start to come out. Mm. And I think that this is the pivotal point in a relationship where people, you know, you either stay together or you break up, mm -hmm. right? And I think it's remembering if the person you're with, if you're truly in love with them and you see that this person only works on themselves, only tries to resolve all the issues that you guys have in front of you, then it's something that's worth it, right? And so when you guys have problems, don't give up. Have the communication and make sure that you're working on it. And yeah. then also don't be so prideful to always pin it on the other person. I think there's so many times where I would be like, but no, but please understand, like understand my, oh, no, no, I, I was being jealous and I was being annoying because you have to understand how I feel, how I feel like this, please. When you'd be like, dude, you have to accept that you're the one who created this problem because you are being insecure. And so yeah. I have to accept and be like, okay. Like, I can't be so prideful to put it on you and just because you need to understand how I was feeling. Right, That's right. not fair. Yeah. I had to do, you know, like, I had work to do. I had some growth to understand why I was feeling that way. Yeah. And so I think it just comes down to being honest with one another, continuing to be communicative with one another, and then through each obstacle and each thing you guys go through, you only grow stronger. And as long as you're showing each other that you're working on those things that you have problems with, you're actively trying to fix them, then that's what kind of keeps you on your path. Absolutely. Now, if the person isn't doing it, right, they're not working on those things, they just keep falling back, falling back, that's when maybe, you know, mm -hmm. maybe that person is not hearing you out, it's not for you, or whatever that might be. But I think that that's something that has been so wonderful about this relationship is we're able to work through literally anything and everything that comes in front of us. And it's not so give beautiful. up on each other. That's, that's the world we're living in now. The going gets tough and they just... Okay, I'll find another person. The grass is greener. I love right. that you guys stick together and you don't give up on each other. It's a beautiful thing. Mm. And when you when he when you guys first started dating and he was on impulsive and he had to go on these trips and stuff, what was that like for you? Because I know, like we talk about it all the time, how the beginning of a relationship, while it's the most beautiful because you're in the honeymoon stage, it's also the most <laughs> annoyingly painful because <laughs> there's like that lack of security when you're with someone for a while it's like you know each other you know you love each other you know you're locked in but in the beginning it's really hard so then to also come into the situation where he's on this big thing and it's all this stuff like that's not an easy feat for a, a woman to step into you know what I mean it takes a lot of security and a lot of confidence so how did you find that how were you able to overcome those doubts and those things that happened in the beginning 
mm. if they did. Yeah, no, I mean, they definitely did. I think it was just honestly, like, trial and error. Yeah. And, you know, there's so many times where, like, like, I definitely ruined moments for him. You know, he'd be away and something really exciting was happening for him and he should have been celebrating with his friends. But because I was insecure in my head and he was at a club and there were other girls around and, you know, I'd see someone else's story and I'd be like, whoa, but that a lot, right? Then it's like, I regret those moments so much because I'm like, man, like I ruined something special for him when he should have been in the moment enjoying himself with his friends. Mm -hmm. But because he's understanding, because he's, I mean, I'm sure has had similar feelings in the past or whatever it might be, he's understanding of, you know, okay, I understand the position you're in. You're at home. I'm away on a trip with these guys. I'm in a club. Okay, and then we can talk about it and figure it out. And then I had to just realize that that's my own problem, my own thing that I need to work on. And for a while, I did that thing where I just was like, okay, this is how I'm going to deal with the situation. I'm going to tell myself, I don't care. If he does something, he's going to do something. And then if he does something, then he's not the one for me, so whatever. I don't care. Yeah. I know my worth. But then that's still, you can only really say that to yourself so much. <laughs> no. You know, you only can only be, like, not caring so much. And so I realized, like, no, I need to just give myself the facts. Has he ever done anything to prove me otherwise? No. Has his actions ever shown me that he's going to be this loyal or not honest with me? No. This man tells me everything. He's so honest. He's so open. And he's so respectful with people. Mm. Always. So then it's like you just have to go back to the facts and what the person has shown you. And that was how I was able to get through it. But through it together, it's not, you know, like your relationship should, your man should help you feel that security yeah. as well. You know? But sometimes it's a rebuking that. So like, if, I'll give you an example. Like, um, her obstacles are my obstacles. Mm. You think God was like sp spontaneous about her problem? Nah, man, it's a perfect puzzle. Like whatever she needs to go through, I'm on the other end learning the other problem of it. For example, communication, I was a wild boy with my tongue, bro. Like why? Yeah, like, yeah. You wouldn't be able to win an argument with me. Not only would I bring out all your problems in your heart, I'll present them in front of you <laughs> and I'll just destroy you verbally. <laughs> like it would, there was no way you'd ever be able to beat me. Four, four or five men against me I can handle. Like one poor 90 pound woman, there's no shot. <laughs> But then God's like, is that how you're going to talk to the girl that you love? Because, like, I'll be like this, and she just get quiet. And I'll be like, oh, silence is the what destroyed me. Wow. The girl yapping in my face was, was like, the old me. And I'll be like, yo, blah, 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 blah. We'd mm -hmm. argue. But then now there's a new woman who's just like, she'll just sit there and be quiet. And her silence ate me up alive. Wow. Bro. And I was like, whoa. I go, that's really crazy that I just, like, got angry and she just sat there silent. So, like, it changed the way that I spoke to her when I was angry. Mm. That, just by her being quiet, defeated my terrible tongue. And then now I, I'm, I'm in a new place, right? Because there's going to be moments where I, I have to, like, teach her a lesson. Like, hey, you can't do that, right? If I'm going to guide this relationship, the tough part is, like, I have to be the guy that says, hey, this is yes, this is no. You can't do that. A lot of guys take that ability and they're like they be chauvinistic with it right like for example this is a terrible example but like when i get home i want a home cooked meal on my table right that authority i'd rather put it when it's in good use like mm -hmm. if she steps out of line i then go into authority i'm like hey you're not going to do that mm -hmm. you're not going to do that in this home and one of them for example was that uh but instead of me sitting and being like oh, I can't believe you ruined this moment for me, like blah, 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 this and that. I sat with it with God, and I'm like, okay, how do I explain this to her? And God put it in a word for me. So I went to her. I go, hey, don't make God replace you with a woman who can handle this lifestyle. Hmm. And she just sat there with it and been like, oh, like, okay. Like, I want you to come on this journey with me. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to take my joy away from me, that's not from God. Yeah, That's from the devil, and you are letting him come through my back door. And you, I can't be up against my back with you and worried about what you got going on when it comes to your emotions and how you handle things because I have a direction I need to go. I have a, a duty that I have to present. I can't be worried about the made up ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's impossible for me. And if you can't handle it, then you are not the woman for me. Mm -hmm. So go, this is your task, go deal with it. Now mind you, later on in life, I've started to learn that, okay, she's built with a little bit more emotion than me. So I have to die to myself. And my ego, okay, so once I fixed that problem, I wasn't like, okay, now it's done. Her problem's fixed. Now I have to look in the mirror and be like, okay, now how do I ease her heart? Yeah. Right? Because if we're going to ask God to come to our mess, he's going to have to come to our mess. So how am I going to look at her problems and be like, that's your issue. You deal with it. No, we're going to do this together. Okay, I've already told you truths. And here's another part that I have to add to this. I tell her hard truths. There's some things that even my father's like, maybe don't tell her that. You know, like maybe like you just you leave that one out. But I'm like, nope, I put it on the table. 
Why? Because it's going to hurt. She's probably going to cry. She's probably going to get upset. But I guarantee you she's not going to doubt when I'm being honest. Right, 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 right. Because right. I have no problem breaking your heart if it's for the truth. Mm. If I'm going to present my heart, I'm presenting all of it. I'm not going to hide some stuff. Because then it might show up in the future. And then she'll be like, wait, why would you? I think if you hide information, that's also lying. Mm -hmm. So if I'm blatantly honest... She's going to know how honest I am to be like, oh, this kid's super honest. Like, he's like he made me cry about this situation. He's not going to lie about that situation. Yeah, so and so, so you have to present everything. And as a man, the leading part is when to go into fights and when not to go into fights. You have to be monitoring the conversation. Like, if there's if we, if we have an argument this. over something so stupid, I, I will literally check and be like, hey, dude, what's going on? Why are we talking about this? Move on yeah. from this. Yeah. yeah. Or, okay, I understand, like... And by the way, just to make this very clear, I'm not perfect at this. This takes practice. Mm -hmm. There's times where I'd shut down her emotions, and then a day later, God goes, whoa, go back. Mm -hmm. Represent yourself, because you didn't do it the right way. Okay. So I have to, and by the way, when you apologize, make it sincere. Don't run past it. No. So when I sit there, I'll look her in the eyes. I'm like, yo, I wronged you. I should have said this, 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 and that. I said this. I present my mistakes first. Then I correct them so then we could correct her mistakes. But if I'm only coming to correct her mistakes, it's it's like you, it's like this all the time. And that's not loving. That's not loving at all. Mm -hmm. And God came down as in an act. I'm going to act accordingly. You follow. So if I'm going to lead this relationship, I got to act accordingly. So if she comes up and presents me a problem, I can't be like, oh, dude, you got to say blah, 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 blah. No, it's like, okay, I hear you. I could either take it. Or I could be like, no, I, I disagree with you. And then we could have that conversation. People don't want to have a conversation. There's so many times she'll bring up something. And dude, literally, I just sit there looking at her like this. And by the time she's done speaking, she's like, yeah, I know. That was stupid. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> Wait, I love you. Like, so because like, like, she knows my voice now. So she already hears what I'm about to say. How many times do we have that with God? Yeah, where yeah, we say yeah. something and we're like, oh, are we yeah. know. Like while you're praying, you're talking to God. And you're like, oh, right, I know. Okay, yeah, I know I didn't say that. I love it so It was a pattern. It was, it was, it was practicing it, right? Mm -hmm. And then we started falling in order with each other. But mm -hmm. but first, I told her, uh, th like, let me give you an example. It always has to come to God first. One uh, Last week, I, I know we said this before, but this is your podcast, yeah. so we're going to say this. Last week, we got in a little tiff, a little argument. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be quite honest with you. It was a stupid argument. It was a tiny one, too. But I I knew she thought I might be upset, but I wasn't upset. I was just like, meh, well, I'll move on. It was a little one. It wasn't, like, a big deal. Sounds but like she, was, she, was saying a, she was saying a prayer. And I was sleeping. I was facing this way. And I said, Bella, you're going to blah, blah, blah. And I turned around and uh, she's in prayer. And I was like, oh, okay. So I turned around and I know her. I know that she doesn't want to think that she's disrespecting me. So she stopped praying and she goes, George, I'm praying right now. And then she went back to prayer. Now, I could have saw this and been like, oh, that was really sweet. But I, that got me very angry because she ruined the balance of order. I then afterwards told her, I go, there's, I don't care who, I don't care if the house is on fire and our kids are in there. If you are talking to God, you finish talking mm -hmm. to God. And then you, you'll ever acknowledge my existence before you acknowledge his. If I was in a conversation with Belle and she said something and I stopped talking to Belle and I started talking to you, that's disrespecting Belle. So I told her, I go, there's an order to our life and I will never be bigger than God. Even if I'm a chauvinistic, if I'm in my pride, if I, I would rather you break my knees and bend non-willing than for me to ever walk the wrong direction. I have to program that thoughts in her. She has to see me as secondary. Yeah. And if I see her seeing me as first accidentally because she's scared of my feelings, you saw it wrong. Forget my feelings. Mm -hmm. Put my feelings and throw them in the trash if you're talking to God. You finish talking to God. Amen. And then you talk to me. These are the times where I go, hey, you're wrong mm -hmm. because I'm walking with God. Not, hey, woman, where's my meal? Mm -hmm. I, want a, I want a meal here. There, a lot of men feel like they need to like dictate with a heavy hand. And if you dictate with love, if you show Thank love, you. if you move with love, they'll be willing to present the love. There's times where I look at her and I'm like, dude, I don't deserve you. Mm -hmm. I do not deserve you. But I know that's how she feels when she looks at me. That is where your relationship should be. I don't deserve her. She was a gift from God. She does not deserve me. I was a gift from God. If I took a gift and I didn't respect it, I know the gift giver would probably halt on giving me mm -hmm. more gifts. Mm -hmm. So I honor these gifts with all of my heart. And I pray about them. I'm like, hey, God, I think I'm doing pretty well with this gift. 
But if I'm not, open up my eyes and ears. Amen. Everybody wants to see the signs, right? But why don't you ask God to show you the signs that were already given to you that you're too blind to see? Mm. There's so many things. He's probably knocking on your heart. Be like, hey, dude, like, you know, your your fiance has been at the house. You've been working nonstop. There's a bunch of street women around you. Like, have you checked in on her heart? See how she's doing? Have you called in? Yeah. There's so many things. Like, I'm 31. She's 25. In 10 years, we're going to look at this podcast and be like, yo, we thought we figured yeah. it out. There's so many more things we had to figure out. That's why we give it to God, because he's the endless supplier. Amen. We're not. Amen. You make her feel so safe. I'm telling you, when you make someone feel safe, it's like when you give a girl a house, she'll give you a home. When she can drop from her head to her heart, you will get the most beautiful version of her. And that's what you do. You make her feel so safe. Both How's your guys' dating life? Both of you. We, all um, we have is each other. Bro, you know how many people hit us up you about you guys? How are you any, guys single? Yeah, how do you not? Any good um, Christ-like men any good, any that you good can... Men. Um, uh, you know what's so funny? How many times I was on the couch, I was like, no. Way, buddy. No I know, way. I know. That's the thing. I was like, I'm, like, not, oh, I'm not connecting no. you guys. There was yeah. one guy, but he's a little older. I don't know if you guys, he's he's a little older. That's perfect for you, Angela. <laughs> I was about to say, he's a little older, but he's the sweetest human being I've ever met in my life. Really? Like, in my, like, bro, like, I hang out with him and I'm like, I'm a, I'm a butthole. Like, when I hang out with him, he is like, he is like a nice dude. I'm like, this guy is a nice dude. Uh, that that was a guy, but then I, in my heart, I didn't feel like it was set right. I, I think, um, my opinion is this, like, I think you guys have so much on your plates. I think God is going to finish you guys first oh, before absolutely. opening up 100%. a door. Listen, right. God already put a major call on my life to be single 100%. Like, I already know that. And Oh, be fi- careful how you speak. Because, like, you're speaking that into existence. Oh, no, I know. But I know. Or a co- for as long as he sees fit. And Perfect. it's, oh, right. absolutely. No. And he, you meet some, like, bitter women. Like, no, God wants me to be single. No, no, like, no, not like You're that. 98, buddy. We had a lot of people no, no. come up to you and talk to you, dude. <laughs> no. no, but you know what I mean? I just, I have some, I have some things to work out in my life. And I have to, I know that that's what he wants for me right now. And also, Ari and I are in such a specific part of our lives where, like, who we, who you marry is already the most important thing, that decision you ever make. And then, add having a calling in ministry on top of it changes everything his calling has to match ours you know what I mean it's just it's there's levels to it and we have to be very you know whoever God wants for us we're I see cowboys oh. not that I'm oh wait didn't you guys ask for prophecy yeah. that's so weird because I literally just started how seeing much I love cowboys really I, I see a guy who's seen. super super and by the way I'm not saying that I'm seeing the future but I when you said this I pictured a man distance from social media he's like a cowboy dude and he doesn't like the limelight and he enjoys that you are that like the and person. he's chopping wood yeah <laughs> okay cool just, but you know why though i feel like and you just see that? super ripped bro and always shirtless too just, <laughs> actually does he have the boots on but you know what though what else do you, you know why he I knows think this, is? i'm like you know what maybe i want this guy like, <laughs> <laughs> but i think why you you see that is because I don't know, but I feel like right now, too, in the... I feel like you guys want manly men, and I feel like right now the manly men are, like, it's that... that they're staying in that path, you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like you, you'll have an easy time finding one there, you know what I mean? Well, kind of goes, babe, come on, hold hands. Let's talk about Jesus. And you're no, like, oh, dude, go back to chopping wood, buddy. I really can't do that. No, you know how many clips you got from when you're like, I just want to shut my brain off? And, like, I have a man lead me. And every single girl was like, I get this. I do want to shut my brain off. They un- yeah. Well, no, they understand because it just sounds so countercultural. But that is, like, you see it perfectly. Everybody look at Shauna in George and see that this is what happens when a masculine man and a feminine woman come together. You see George, he's totally in his masculine because that's who he is. But you inspire that out of him with your submission and with your femininity. And your femininity, it's, it's who you are innately. But at the same time, his security, you are like, you're free, you're fun, you're flirty, you're joyful. Like, that's just, you can tell that you're just happy. And that's what happens when you're with a masculine yeah. man. 100%. So we're trying to go. The truth no, is, is like, really, really, really in your heart, if you really want a man, I swear to you, I, we've actually prayed for other people. They've welcomed people in their life. This is what you do. Mm-hmm. Ready for this? Pray. Oh, of course. That literally, like, we're not worried about Hey, our- is it okay that I pray that he doesn't slurp? Slurp? <laughs> I don't want to marry a guy that like, slurps. I can't. Why don't you just tell him to cut it out? Like if he does slurps that. the food. Slurp. Like I can't do it. Why? Because I slurp. Oh my god! Is that why you're saying that? Oh my god! You slurp. I know we're working on it. You're a slurper. Hey man, I figured out why you're single. No, I still love. I you. Don't, I still love. Why are you saying that? I slurp my coffee in the morning for like two seconds I'm when it's still hot. You know? It's Thank like we're you. married. It's wait, 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 do you do that while you eat? No. Uh, yeah. 
What are you talking? This is I the last episode of I Girls Gone Bible. All right, guys. Anyways, join us. <laughs> anyways, yeah, <laughs> join us. Our show, the George Jago show. Uh, anyway, we don't slurp. But, but like, what if? No, we you know pray. what though? What if you meet a man and and he's everything you've ever wished for, but he slurps, and then that ends up being something you love about him. You're like, oh, babe, it's okay when you slurp. And on what your if he? Soup. What if he slurps while he's talking? Hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> <laughs> I was hit a bit. What's that talk? It's a slurp he's talk. Oh no, well. that's a lisp. Now you're also speaking of lisps, kind of rude that they named. Uh, lisp, all the like they, all the letters that they can't even pronounce. Lisp. Like, hey, what do you have? Lisp. You guys are doing such incredible things, and I love that you're doing it together. And I just love what you're doing. You've come so far in what you're doing with the George Janko show, which everybody needs to go watch. You're having politicians on. You're having, <laughs> mi- you know, massive Christians on. You're preaching the gospel. You're hitting topics that are hard, and the and and people in Hollywood and in the industry can't touch. Yeah. And you guys are talking about them we're grateful for it and we're grateful for your friendship as well we really are do you guys know that you guys were put on the roster after them but we put you guys first i love you so much yeah, no, no, Why? no no for yes. real for real ask her like uh we had everything lined up and then we made okay so this is what happened we made commitments but no dates and then we had all after the andrew tate episode it exploded we have a year yeah. of calendars out mm-hmm. I go, well, we already kind of said that we're going to do this, but we started locking in dates. And so I prayed about it and I was worried because like, I was like, I didn't watch your guys' show right away. Mm -hmm. So like, I was like, what if they're like kind of preaching the word the wrong way? And then like, and then I like have them on and they go off and do their own thing. Um, That Russell guy, he, that he, Russlin? Russ. Russ, yeah. yeah. Russlin, sorry. Russlin, like uh, I've had uh, conversations with him. I've probably had like maybe 10 conversations with different like uh, Christian podcasts. But something in my heart was like, no, go sit down with them, like now. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. But also, you guys checked me on my like w- verbiage, so like that changed a lot of my life moving forward. Because from my mouth, I realized that my diligence with my like my tongue was out of whack, which means like, okay, if my tongue is out of whack, then that must mean my temple's out of whack. Then I found out my temple was out of whack. So it literally was just a domino effect of all these things. So. To be honest, thank you guys for coming on the show. And like I, I get that our show is doing really, really, really well right now, and thank God for that. But it's moments like that where I have like authentic, real people come on and have cool conversations. So like I'm very excited I got by, by platform and like I just slurred again. But <laughs> don't don't date me. Like, I was gonna be slurping all the time. Slurping all the time. But I'm very proud of you guys, and I think that yeah. you guys are on on an amazing path, and I'm excited to see where you guys take it. And mm-hmm. I really wanna say again, don't worry so much about what your audience is telling you because if I would have done that, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. I would have changed because my audience at the time made me wanted me to be funnier or like maybe you wanted to go and do this and do that. Like I just had, once I focused completely on my behavior, what God wants me to do, then everything started following along. Wow. And can I just say too, that what you guys are doing, just as you're saying like us, but what you're doing is so beautiful because you guys are beautiful young women who are setting such a wonderful example for women and for young girls to be like, oh, like, you know, like I, I want to be like Angela and Arielle. Like they're so sweet and humble and they put God first. And you guys are just giving such a wonderful example. Like in a world where we have so many actors and singers and models who kind of portray this wrong message and this mm-hmm. wrong example, you have so... Like, you just have so many girls and young girls who are able to look at you and be like, wow, like, that's who I want to be like. Amen. Look at the dress thing. The dress thing, right? Let's put this as an example. You talked about this and you were like, oh, I I wanted to take it down. Just you being authentic was an amazing plus. That in your heart, you're like, oh, man, I really disappointed one human being Mm -hmm. by, like, being like, oh, I shouldn't wear this. Okay, now you come and you bring this to the table. How many young ladies are like, dude, I fell the same way? And that conversation spurred them to next, tomorrow at school, I'm going to dress a little bit more accordingly. Remember, when you read the scriptures, it was all of the failures of Mm -hmm. David that set him up for God's glory. It was all the failures of Adam and Abraham and Isaac and Ishmael and all these people failed them consistently, but God catapulted their failures into successes. Don't run away from your failures. Examine them. Say your forgiveness and then just move on but don't let that weigh on you because i'm telling you right now bro the devil's in butthole yeah but he is a butthole and he'll sit you <laughs> in your head and he'll make you not forgive yourself yeah but if god said you're worth forgiving remember who are you to not forgive yourself right so like you're you, so right. you gotta like gotta make sure you hold that into accountability but i think mine was the mouth thing and yours is like be careful of what how many thoughts are in your head 
Because there's Thank especially so like as young George. women, bro. Like yep. that's already tough enough to be a young, beautiful woman in this industry. Every single thing you do is gonna be like. Remember when she did this and did that? People and blah, always blah. have something yeah, to say. Yeah. People, you, you smile all the time. People are like, "Oh, they're fake. They're always smiling." You give a serious face. Oh, look at her. She's trying to look sexy. Come on, bro. We I thought know. you were fake. I thought you guys were fake when I met you guys. Really? I was like, "Yeah, bro." I'm like, "This girl's a whack dog." And why? then I listened, and I was like, "Oh, okay." I Wait, can I ask why? It was what just was a, it? Mm, I'm just kidding. I was just kidding. No, no, no. No, wait. Do on you, our episode, they were just going mm, a lot. That was an inside joke. Hey, wait. Do we really look whack on Instagram? No, no, no. I it just assumed. Fake. I assumed. But that's my issue. That's what I'm saying. Like, you guys have to stick in your own realm. Because even if myself, I, I'm going to be like, I'm going to judge. That ain't God saying, hey, hey, you should judge these people. That's the devil being like, <laughs> you should have listened to these people. Do you I get like my arm jiggle like that? I feel like <laughs> I look kind of cool on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, no, you said we look fake. All right, no, whatever. No. No, I, feel, no. I feel like we look pretty cool. Not no, no, not like. Like an, a look, not like a look thing. No, no, but I trust me. The number one thing that we always get is people always. So we've met so many people in the like Christian space, and all of their friends will always be like, "Hey, you met those girls. Is it real? Do they really love Jesus?" Yeah. Yeah. It's the number one thing. And, and mm. then my our like our friends JT and Nate. Everybody that they meet, ask them like, "Is it real, or are they just like, is it just a thing that they do?" But honestly, honest, why, why would they think that way? Though? But can I just be honest? Like, it's it is because you guys are both so beautiful, and that might be wrong to say. I I don't know if it's wrong to say, but you guys are both just so beautiful that people are like, you're so beautiful. I don't know. You could be doing anything. Like, is this how you feel? Which is such a weird thing to put. But I think it's because we have so many examples in our society. Yeah. If you're a model, if you're an actor, if you're a singer, right? And you're held at this certain stature, or you look this certain way, they expect you to act a certain way. Mm -hmm. And you so guys are not right. acting by what people are used to seeing. Mm -hmm. So they're like, huh, like, is it real? And yeah. I think people maybe get, it's the, you know, judging a book by its cover. Yeah. People are getting stuck by that. Yeah, no. We got to remember you so that much. your thoughts are not all yours. That's why you don't, you're not judged on your thoughts. You're judged on what your mouth says, Absolutely. right? You don't take accountability for your thoughts because it could be demons. Mm -hmm. When I saw you guys, and mm -hmm. I'm counter, like, uh, debating, like, should I even be on the show? Of course the devil's going to be like, nah, they're fake. They're mm -hmm. called Girls Gone Bible. That's going to be the first thing that hits my head. Why? Because the devil knows that if I'm presented in front of you guys, that you guys will check me on my mouth. There's only good, so why he's not going to be like, yeah, go ahead, no problem with that. So, do you think your viewers are going to have a great time looking at you guys? No, they're going to they're going to be challenged themselves. Yeah. And then the people that make it here are going to be like, oh, I really like this. Some people are going to stick. Some people, their hearts are hardened, and they don't want to hear right now. There's going to be so many reasons and explanations, but if long again, if long as you focus on God and know that how you're presented, you're doing it as if He's watching you then he'll lift you through it. Yeah. If he wanted you to wear that dress or not wear that dress, I guarantee you God's powerful enough for in the moment you grab that dress and he'd be like, no, don't wear that dress. Oh, and he'd be I like, oh, okay. And you, you get yeah. what I'm saying? He can intervene, yeah. but he knows the bigger picture. He knows what's going to happen. We got to remember, Paul killed Christians. Mm -hmm. He was a murderer. And he had to get blind for yeah. God to start using him. So like for us to like try to avoid every mistake that we're making, it's just... It's unholy. It's, it's true. It's not possible, bro. Yeah. Like, you have to seek Christ with all of your heart, and you can't condemn yourself for every action you make. You're just going to be paralyzed in fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's so true. It's There's so a difference true. of making the same mistake and just not feeling bad about it. I just oh, want that course. to be very clear. No. But, yeah, you should be easy on yourselves, guys. Like, you're good. Thank, Thank you. you we love you guys so much. So much. Thank you, you for coming on seriously. Thank you for we having love us. You. What a great episode. Honestly, I what a good episode. I saw the Holy Spirit just speaking through you guys. I was no. like, I don't even say nothing. Truly. Okay, you guys, we love you we love so, you. so <laughs> much. May the Lord bless you. And the way they are. <laughs> <laughs> may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace. Oh, we love you guys so much. We love you guys so much. Yo, you guys got to subscribe to the show. This is crazy. This is so beautiful for your life. Yeah, bro. We don't bless them. We just make like a weird joke and then bounce. Thank you guys. Thank you so much.